Hello and welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Five people were killed and three others seriously injured in an accident on National Highway 44 on November 5th in Anantapur of Andhra Pradesh. A man and a woman are in critical condition after half a dozen vehicles collided on a highway near Delhi early this morning in the haze of Diwali, pollution and smog. Terrorists opened fire at the security forces at Skims Medical College Hospital in the Bemina region of Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir on Friday. Now for the news in details. The Chinese government on Friday sent out a warning to die-hard Taiwan politicians saying such separatist elements are on the mainland's list and will be punished in accordance with the law. The remarks came from Zhu Fenglian, who is a spokesperson for the Taiwan Affairs Office of the State Council in response to a media query regarding the punitive measures against stubborn secessionists, Xinhua reported. Zhu also said that those on the list together with their relatives shall not enter the mainland and the two special administrative regions of Hong Kong and Macau and their affiliated institutions shall be restricted from forging any cooperation with organizations and individuals on the mainland. She also added that their sponsors of Taiwan independence and related enterprises shall be banned from engaging in profit-making activities on the mainland. India will be hosting the Delhi Regional Security Dialogue on Afghanistan on the 10th of November. The meeting will be at the NSA level and NSA Ajit Doval will chair it. Two earlier meetings in this format have been held in Iran in September 2018 and December 2019. The third meeting in India could not be held earlier due to the pandemic. Sources said there has been an overwhelming response to India's invitation. Central Asian countries as well as Russia and Iran have confirmed participation. This is the first time that all Central Asian countries, not just Afghanistan's immediate land neighbors, are participating in this format. The enthusiastic response is a manifestation of the importance attached to India's role in regional efforts to promote peace and security in Afghanistan. Sources said invitations have been extended to China and Pakistan too and formal responses are awaited. However, Pakistan has indicated through the media that it will not attend. Sources said that Pakistan's decision is unfortunate but not surprising and it, ref it reflects its mindset of viewing Afghanistan at its, at its protectorate. Pakistan has not attended the previous meetings of this format. The high-level participation in next week's meeting hosted by India reflects the widespread and growing concern of regional countries about the situation in Afghanistan and their desire to consult and coordinate with each other. India has an important role to play in this process. India believes the challenges faced by Bosnia and Herzegovina could be overcome by its leaders through dialogue, mutual understanding and empathy towards each other's positions, said Councillor in India's permanent mission to the UN, Pratik Mathur, on November 4th. Speaking at the United Nations Security Council debate on the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mathur said the recent political developments in Bosnia and Herzegovina have the potential to undermine the progress made in the last two decades. It is important that all parties are encouraged to adopt a conciliatory approach and work closely to address all contentious issues. Herzegovina have the potential to undermine the progress made in the last two decades. It is important that all parties are encouraged to adopt a conciliatory approach and work closely to address all contentious issues. We believe the General Framework Agreement for Peace provides the basis to find solutions related to inter-ethnic conflict settlement through dialogue of the parties based on equality and mutual respect, compromise and consensus. 
the agreement remains important for building enduring peace and stability in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Office of the High Representative, as an ad hoc international institutional mechanism, has been overseeing the implementation of the civilian aspects of the agreement. We believe it is incumbent on OHR to continue to work with all parties objectively to build trust to overcome the impediments. OHR is an interim mechanism and expeditious implementation of the 5 plus 2 agenda should remain the top priority. The new High Representative has before him an emerging political situation which, if not addressed diligently, could adversely impact the peace agreement. Therefore, the new High Representative needs to promote cohesion and mutual understanding among all parties. We hope that this agreement among members of the Peace Implementation Council steering board over the Office of the High Representative will be resolved through consensus and constructive engagement in line with the peace agreement. Bosnia and Herzegovina, due to its multi-ethnic, multilingual, multicultural, and multi-religious nature, has been facing challenges on its path towards sustainable peace. We believe these challenges could be overcome by its leaders through dialogue, mutual understanding, and empathy towards each other. Europe is once again at the epicenter of the COVID pandemic. The World Health Organization has warned as cases soar across the continent. At a press conference, WHO Europe head Hans Kluge said that the continent could see half a million more deaths by February. He blamed insufficient vaccine take-up for the rise. The rate of vaccination has slowed across the continent in recent months, while some 80% of people in Spain are double-jabbed. In Germany, it is as low as 66% and far lower in some Eastern European countries. Only 32% of Russians are fully vaccinated till October 2021. Kluge also blamed a relaxation of public health measures for rising infections in the WHO's European region, which covers 53 countries, including parts of Central Asia. So far, the WHO has recorded 1.4 million deaths across the region. Talks aimed at reviving the landmark 2015 nuclear deal between Iran and six other nations are to resume this month. Iran's chief negotiator, Ali Bakeri Kani, in Twitter yesterday said that Iran had agreed to start the negotiations aiming at removal of unlawful and inhumane sanctions on 29th November in Vienna. The discussions have been on hold since the election of Iran's new hardline president in June. The U.S. pulled out the deal under President Donald Trump, but Washington has since said it could consider rejoining. The Biden administration said it will attend the Vienna meet along with the remaining signatories, the U.K., China, France, Germany and Russia. Congressman Danny K. Davis of Chicago, Illinois, hosted a congressional reception to celebrate Diwali at the National Democratic Club, Washington, D.C. He celebrated Festival of Lights with Indian Diaspora. Dr. Vijay G. Prabhakar, Indian American community leader from Chicago, said that this Diwali celebration with the participation of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the third highest elected official of the U.S., was significant because this was the first time since 2009 that Diwali was not being hosted at the White House. here at the National Democratic Club in Washington, D.C. It's especially significant that the third highest elected official of United States of America, Speaker Nancy Pulaski, along with Congressman Danny K. Davis and Congressman Richard Meal, lit the lamp of light to signify the Deepawali celebration in Washington, D.C. 
Every year since 2009, since President Obama, Deepavali was celebrated in the White House. This year, for reasons best known, President Biden and Kamala Harris did not celebrate Deepavali, the largest and oldest festival of India in Washington, D.C. and in White Authorities in northwestern China's Qinghai province are forcing young Tibetan monks to leave their monastery, sending them back to their family homes in a drive that threatens their connection to Tibet's traditional re religion and culture, sources say. The move announced in a religious affairs regulation on October 1st has already seen monks aged 11 to 15 years expelled from Thitsa Monastery and in Qinghai, historically a part of northeastern Tibet's Amdo region, according to reports. The new regulation says that monasteries in Qinghai may no longer admit underage boys as monks or allow them to take part in religious activities, but doesn't specify the age limit required, the source said. Authorities in Tibetan populated regions of neighboring Sichuan had already begun three years ago to remove young monks from their monasteries so they could return to government-run schools and learn to serve society, Tibetan sources told RFA in earlier reports. Many had enrolled in the monastery's courses in Buddhist philosophy and logic and some were top students in their class. Chinese authorities have long sought to restrict the size and influence of Tibetan Buddhist monasteries, traditionally a focus of Tibetan culture and national identity, sources in the region said. Five cases being handled by Samir Wankhiri, the NCB officer leading inquiries into the Aryan Khan drugs case, have been transferred out of his Mumbai unit over allegations of an 8 crore rupee payoff linked to the case involving Bollywood star Shah Rukh Khan's son. An SIT or special investigation team to be led by senior police officer Sanjay Singh will take over the Aryan Khan case as well as five others that were being handled by Wankhiri. Samir Wankeri has been at the center of a major controversy after accusations from Nawab Malik and more importantly from Prabhakar Sale, an NCB witness in the Aryan Khan case, brought his record and his handling of cases into question. A day after the center slashed excise duty on petrol and diesel by rupees 5 and rupees 10, and the Nagaland government announced on additional reduction of value added tax on petrol and diesel by rupees 7 per litre each. The fuel price today in Dimapur is reduced to rupees 96.93 and diesel to 83.71 per litre. With the cut in central and state taxes, petrol is cheaper by rupees 11.4 per litre and diesel by rupees 16.91 today. Let's have a look at the reaction of the consumers from a reporter, Adona. Dam bishu utya karne bishu duk baat aga do itado nami dishe itado bishu mon bahal paega sabko kina dam na. So, apne laga apna the itu commodities price mein libi itu fear gari la fears kambi itu nami u lagi na na petrol dam nami anis na. Itado itado more than seventeen rupees to dam nami jaise dosa vegetables kano libi food kano libi no libi taxi fear bus fear no libi auto fear kambi number lagye kya mani bishu nami jaise do itado. Uh, Indian government about 10 rupees, or uh, Nagaland government about 7 rupees, Dam Dishan 17 rupees, Dam Shay to Garni, Sub Nambo like a way normal view to Incas. Last question to it, uh, government Laga Porte to last Mandu, Bishi consecutively Utai Dina to this Mandan Namai Dishito, Itula Porte, Amnila opinion to government to it to government la police to Kinikaze, politics Kilias Nana, no Levi to Gusala Brabi, public la grievances, Saina to Namai de la Asa, Amnila Babna, Amnila observation Kiasa. I politics Manula ekbar khushi bahu diyele. Aro kijen ne future de aro uti ho bare. Ite ite saala train de sabte do aro uti unj na se. The common public, I mean, I guess I myself are quite happy because higher petrol pump, petrol rates kora do so probably inconvenience tagishe. But as of now, 
আস্তে আস্তে নর্মাল হয়ে যাবো সিচুয়েশন তো কি কমিটিস খান কি উলিবে সব হাই রেট হয়ে যাবো সব মানুষ ইতলা মার্কেট লাই ডেলি তো সব মানুষ দুঃখ পা আছে সো আই গেস দ্য গভর্নমেন্ট উইল ইউ নো থিঙ্ক এবাউট ইট ফর দ্য বেটার সাইড যা মহিনা অক্টোবর ডে কন্টিনিউসলি কনজিভেটিভলি পেট্রোল প্রাইস তো উঠাই দিই না লাগছে আর দিস মানু নামাই দিছে তো গভর্নমেন্ট পলিসি লো পড়ে কি আপনি লাভ আপনার কি আছে তা এইটু লো কি না কব না সব মানুষ বি নিজের অপিনিয়ন বিয়েস আলাগ আলাগ থাকে সো মেবি গভর্নমেন্ট বি দে জানি আসলে কিনে হলে সাইম সিচুয়েশন লাই হিসাবে উঠিও লাগে নামিও লাগে না সো আই থিঙ্ক কি কি ভাবি না থাকিলে বি গভর্নমেন্ট আই থিং দি আর টেকিং এ গুড স্টেপ সো দে হ্যাভ দি দ্য কমেন্টাল জব ফর রিডিউসিং দ্য পেট্রোল অল দোজ প্রাইসেস তো এটা মোগান এই কনজিউমার্স আর পাবলিকানকে কথাবাজি করে কি না শুনে পাইছে এই সেন্ট্রেল আর স্টেট গভর্নমেন্ট ব্রা এই ফুয়েল প্রাইস নামাই দেওয়ার ওপর টাকা লাগা খুশি বি জানাই দিছে আর এই ওপরে পেট্রোল আর ডিজেল লাগা দাম নামাই দেওয়ার নিচিনা এই কমোডিটিস লাগা প্রাইস আর এই ঘড়ি ফিয়ার কান লাগা বি নামাই দিলে ভাল হব ভয় না বি মান জানি পাইছে এই আজি আজি লাউ গ্রাম রিপোর্ট মো আদো নাই রে উইথ কেমার পার্সন সেইভিলে ফোন বিল টিভি ডিমাপুর The UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, has started airlifting aid into Kabul for the first time since the Taliban overran the country. The agency spokesperson, Shabia Mantu, said that the agency is using land, sea and air routes to bring humanitarian relief into Afghanistan. She said a plane carrying 33 tons of supplies for displaced Afghans reached Kabul and two additional flights are scheduled for this month. Further relief supplies have also been prepositioned in Uzbekistan ready to be trucked into Afghanistan, she added. The spokesperson said much more is needed to prevent Afghanistan from plunging deeper into a humanitarian crisis that may fear will exceed the misery of war-torn Syria or Yemen. Terrorists opened fire at the security forces at Skim's Medical College Hospital in the Bimina region of Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir on Friday. There was a brief firefight between terrorists and security forces at the hospital. Terrorists managed to escape taking advantage of civilian presence, said Srinagar police. A search operation has been launched. Currency with public has continued to rise even five years after the government announced demonetization on November 8, 2016. With cash remaining the preferred mode of payment, currency with public for the fortnight ended October 8, 2021, and it stood at a record high of Rs 28.30 lakh crore, up to 57.48% of Rs 10.33 lakh crore, from a level of Rs 17.97 lakh crore on November 4, 2016. Cash with public has shot up 211% from Rs 9.11 lakh crore, recorded on November 25, 2016. According to the Reserve Bank of India, for the fortnight ended October 23, 2020, the currency with public rose by Rs 15,582 crore ahead of the Diwali festival. It rose by 8.5% or Rs 2.21 lakh crore on a year-on-year -year basis. After Rs 500 and Rs 1000 notes were withdrawn in November 2016, currency with the public which stood at Rs 17.97 lakh crore on November 4, 2016 declined to Rs 7.8 lakh crore in January 2017. Cash in the system has been steadily rising even though the government and the RBI have pushed for a less cash society digitization of payments and impose restrictions on the use of cash in various transactions. Thirty more people have tested positive for the Zika virus in Uttar Pradesh's Kanpur, taking the total number of those infected in the district to 66, a senior official said on Friday. Of those infected, 45 are men and 21 women, according to officials. The first case in Kanpur was reported on October 23rd when an Indian Air Force warrant officer tested positive for the Zika virus. 30 more people have been tested positive for the virus in Kanpur, District Magistrate Vishak G. Ayer said. Samples were collected from various pockets in the neighboring areas of Indian Air Force station hangars and sent to the lab at King George's Medical University, Lucknow, for testing. 30 of them came back positive for the virus, he said. 
Zika is a mosquito-borne virus and hence getting rid of mosquitoes is the safe way out. To check the spread of the disease, health teams are undertaking sanitization programs including anti-larvae spraying and identifying fever patients, screening seriously ill people and pregnant women. Health officials have been asked to step up surveillance and ensure door-to-door -door sampling and testing for Zika virus. A high alert has been sounded in the periphery of the hangars of the IAF station, another official said. That's all for the news. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.